Uh, my name is Tony Subcheck. I am from the DeForest Alliance. Uh, I'm here with uh, Bruce Voigt is, is helping me out. And uh, we're the uh, part of the global action team, which consists of uh, our global um, membership team leader, Adam Croson, who's right now doing presidents. Uh, Bruce is the global service team leader, and I'm the global leadership team leader. Um, I am going to share my screen here, and I hope this works. There we go. All right, you guys can all see that, I hope. Let me unmute you and find out. Let's see. And I gotta do that. How do I do that now? Here we go. Unmute, unmute all. How about that? Well, just see, that's what we got. We're going to start. Oh, here we go. Look at that. Let's see. Uh, I was able to unmute myself, Tony. Okay, good. Um, I, for because as soon as I started sharing my screen, I lost the unmute all button. So yep. we can uh, see your screen. Okay, you can see it. Great. Uh, I'm going to go back yeah. here. There we go. Okay. All right, so uh, welcome everybody. Uh, this is the, the Lions District 2071 Treasurers. And so if you're here for some other thing, you can learn about being a treasurer. Uh, again, uh, uh, we're gonna talk about, uh, um, we're gonna have some, some uh, Brian Bill Clausius, who's our first vice district governor elect and Lion Al Johnson, who is our second vice district governor elect, are gonna say some things for us. And then a little bit uh, later, uh, our district governor elect, uh, Tammy Rockenbach is going to be joining us as well to uh, tell us a few things. Um, we're gonna go over some important things about being a treasurer, uh, just try to cover the, the most important stuff and then we can do question and answers toward the end for things that, that you might have uh, particular questions about and and then we'll be done i'm hoping that we can do this in in less than an hour but I'll, i will be here as long as anybody needs me to be here i want to make sure that you understand and if uh, some uh, somebody else has an answer for something that i can't uh, answer please feel free to pipe in and uh, give us your insight on something so we are going to start with um uh, lion bill clausius so, uh, Bill, uh, I know that you have something. Can you unmute yourself, please? And uh, the floor is yours. Thank you and welcome. I uh, just wanted to uh, introduce myself to the group. I am your second vice district governor and soon to be first vice district governor starting on July the 1st. Uh, I wanted to, uh, I'm really happy that you're participating in this training. Uh, district is always concerned that our officers, especially the new ones, get the uh, adequate training that they need. And this is our vehicle to do it, uh, albeit uh, not uh, uh, um, um, kind of an unexpected way of doing it. Uh, I think a lot of us miss the dinner meal that we always had and the uh, ability to talk to each other uh, directly, uh, maybe next year. But anyway, I just wanted to introduce myself and let you know that I am available to you also as a contact, although I can't uh, admit that I know lots about being a treasurer for the Lions, uh, but you can rely on Bruce and Tony uh, to help you out. So thanks again and have a good training. Thank you, Lion Bell. Uh, Lion Al, our, our, our second vice I'm here and I'm ready to go. Where are you? Where am I? It's, yeah, you're, you're, you're there, go ahead. We're ready for you. Oh, all right. Everybody hear me? Yeah. I'm not sure if I see it. Anyway, my name is Alan Johnson. I'll be your second vice district governor this next coming year. And I also would like to welcome you to this training and hope that you get something out of it. If you don't, we will be glad as an executive team to continue to help you in some way. Be feel to reach out and, and make sure that it happens. We have a lot of challenges, I think, for the next not only the next year, but several years now with this Corona thing. And I believe that we can get through this if we all work together and help to achieve those goals that we have for each of our clubs. Um, 
thank you for getting me involved in this way. And uh, we'll be talking to you real soon about uh, some of you anyway, um, about uh, club meetings and so on. So hopefully that'll come through. So until then, have a good meeting. All right, thank you very much, Lion L. I lost my screen here. Um, so let me share my screen again. Oh, and Lion Al is from uh, DeForest Lions Club, and Lion Bill is from Correct. the Sun Prairie Lions Club. In case anybody was interested about that, let's see, where are we going here? Here we go. All right, let's share this baby again. All right, from the beginning. That's it. Every little lion. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. Treasurer's duties. Uh, for anybody who's uh, been a treasurer for a lot of years, um, a lot of this might be a little uh, things you already know. Anybody who's new, if I'm going too fast, either raise your hand. Bill will be watching for that. Type a message in the uh, chat window. Um, uh, Bill will, or Bruce, Bruce, I mean, will be watching for that. And uh, don't be afraid to ask a question if something's a little confusing because if uh, those of us have been doing it a while, it just kind of makes sense. Um, what you may find is that the treasurer that you're taking over for um, uh, knows an awful lot about how your club operates and they're probably your best uh, place to get information and uh, learn about what the job entails. Uh, in, in a situation where that's not possible, perhaps uh, they moved away or, or maybe uh, there was some other reason that they, maybe they're sick but you can't get a hold of them, um, you always can call me or, uh, or anybody at the district level and we can, we can come right to you if we need to and help you out. Um, but as the treasurer, uh, you need to work with your, uh, the secretary and the president. The treasurer, secretary, and president are the main parts of the club. And they're the ones that kind of make sure that all the administrative stuff gets done. Uh, presidents in general rely on the secretary and the treasurer to make sure all the forms get filled out, taxes get paid, dues get paid, bills get paid, all of that. So uh, you and the secretary especially, and some of you are both, um, uh, really are the ones that are running the club and making sure that all of the, when I say running, I just mean the, the, the machine making it work. Um, Something else that, that you, you're going to need to do is, is be a, a integral part of the budget committee. Uh, all treasurers are on the budget committee, and uh, usually the president will appoint one, or your bylaws may have a stipulation for who is on the um, budget committee. Uh, in the, uh, so it's important that you, you have good data with everything, you keep track of everything as you go so that you can help create a budget for the next fiscal year. And so if, if your secretary or your treasurer is outgoing, you may want to talk to your uh, board of directors and ask to be involved in that budgeting process. Because if you can be involved now, it'll make it easier for you the next fiscal year. Because you should be working, your club should be working on their budget now for next fiscal year. Uh, uh, make sure you, you, when you get the, the money is paid into the club, it's your responsibility to make sure it gets recorded properly and deposited in the appropriate bank account. Your club should have at the very minimum two different um, uh, activities. Uh, uh, you have administrative and the activity and it's very important that you keep them separate. You may have three. Your club may have an administrative activity and a foundation. Okay, now some clubs have the three, other ones just have activity or administrative and foundation, and foundation. The major difference between these is, and the easiest way to remember it, is admin is lions. It only lions. It only has, you, this is no public is involved in the admin side. Activity side or the foundation side has to do with the public. Money comes in from the public, it goes out to the public. So uh, that's the easiest way to remember. If in doubt, you know, call me. There's stuff that I've sent you out in uh, uh, paperwork that's gone out. I can send it again. 
Also, don't forget that everything that we're going over today is also on our district website. There's actually a tab at the top that's 2020 officer training. And all of this information is there. You can go through it at your leisure and uh, you'll be able to, uh, you know, weed through it if you need to. And if you, if for some reason you just can't, it goes, oh, this is just too much, just give us a call. I really, honestly, that's what we're here for. Um, uh, let me just change the pages here. Um, uh, it's important, you guys have to take, take care of all the general ledger. So if you haven't done this before, every piece of paper that comes in, every disbursement that goes out, every dollar that comes in, you need to keep tight records of. And it's really, really important. I can't stress that enough because if you're ever audited as a club, you've got to be able to bring out that information. I don't know how your clubs uh, do your, your books. Uh, some clubs, um, they do it all on paper and they have ledgers with nothing wrong with that. Um, our club uses a QuickBooks and, um, and that works really, really well. Some people use just spreadsheets, but just make sure that you have one for activities and one for administrative. It's really, really important that you keep them completely separate. The two shall never touch. Um, uh, let's see, anything important on this page? This is just, you know, make sure you do your job. <laughs> uh, ensure that the club is up to date on all payments at District, State, and Lions International. You cannot vote as a club at district, at district convention or at state convention if your club is not up to date in their financials with Lions International. You just will not be able to ask. The first thing they check is, okay, uh, DeForest is, uh, gets seven delegates, and oh, but you know what? They haven't paid International yet, they can't vote. So make sure that you uh, keep up with that and, and get that paid. There's uh, something called My, My Lion that is really important that you get accustomed with. It's um, uh, also, there's my LCI, which is involved in that. And um, uh, let me, I, want, I just want to minimize this for a second so that I can, uh, uh, I'm gonna stop sharing for a second. I wanna unmute everybody. Um, so uh, the, who, does anybody not know how to use my LCI. You can hit the raise hand button, which you have, or you can just type it into the, to the uh, chat window. But if you don't know how to use my LCI, it would be really great. Okay, Angie, do you, do you know? Or yeah, I've you, never been on it. You've never been on my LCI, okay. All right, so all of your bills uh, from uh, Lines International are gonna be posted on my LCI. And as treasurer, um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen again and bring up uh, just, oh, I don't know. Just bring up this here and I'll yeah, bring up this and then what's that? Uh, let me go down here. Okay, so we have um, my lion, okay? All right, so you have My Lion, and so this is, if you go to mylion.org, you're going to get a page that looks like this. All right, so um, you should get a login. When you become treasurer and that information gets through, you will get an email from uh, Lions International that says, here, you need to make an account with My Lion. Um, so you, you, you'll create... Tony, I think you got the wrong... We're not seeing screen that up. screen. Oh, that's too no, bad. That's really good. All right, let me change it. That's fine. Uh, let me just uh, type in my password here first. All right, and oops, try again. All right, sorry. Sorry for the, uh, you're not seeing it, huh? No, you're showing me a treasurer summary page. Okay, then let me hit stop sharing here and start over. There, okay, and your screen, this one. How about that? Can you see that? There you go. Okay. Yeah. All, right. All right. So now on my computer, for some reason, this happens every single time I go to my LCI. 
So I just hit the old back button over here and it brings it up and then I get this page right here. So uh, my LCI is right here and you could go there and I can mute everybody. Somebody's got a lot. He's talking with another person right now, and I can't hear anything. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna. Hey, we need your mute camera. That's a really tough. Yeah, very trail, and sometimes three, four feet deep. You can see a rock or a stump. All right. Okay. All right. We got that. All right. Let's go back to sharing. All right, so this is what it looks like, my LCI. Now, one of the first things you have to do is if you have a uh, more than one account with your club, if you come up here, it says select different titles. So I'm also the club administrator, so I'm gonna click on treasurer, okay? And it's gonna switch over and go to treasurers. It just, it looks the same, but now it's for treasurers. Um, so if you go over here to your Lions Club, down here, you can see all of your members, all about your club, all your officers, statements and dues. And this will bring you to the Lions International site where all of your uh, money is and what your bills are. Now, if you notice, I have a $4.95 credit on my account. And that's because back here, um, uh, I had a bill for $42.17. If you look down here, and I paid forty-seven twelve, so I, I a little dyslexic on my numbers, so I paid too much. So, but that's okay because it gave me a uh, a credit. So, when you're ready to pay your bill, you can click on this make payment here. You can click click it with a credit, debit card, e check, or PayPal. So, if you click on this, you can bring it up, and uh, what it will do is it will say, oh, you want to put it on a credit card or you want to pay it with your saved bank account. Like we have a, a saved bank account right here and I can pay it right through there. You can pay it with a credit card. I hit continue and it goes through and your bills are paid. It's really, really simple. It's probably one of the easiest things that Lions International did. So we have um, none of that. You don't have it yet. You'll have it when you're a, uh, a treasurer, you'll have it. So as soon as I've been- I've been a treasurer for six months and I don't and have that. Has your, has your club secretary uh, put you in as the treasurer on my LCI? Like for instance, when you go up here and select a different title, do you have more than one title? If you look at that, you might have a, a membership for just a member and then there's another treasurer so take a look at that next time you go through if not ask your club secretary uh, to add you as the club treasurer and then you will have access tony who was that was that peter yes I, yeah okay we're a brand new club okay you're dane county winner's circle right Correct. Okay, I'll check. Okay. And I'll let you know before you're off. Okay, okay, so there you go. Thank you for asking. Bruce will hook you up. If anybody else has that, a problem with that too, just let us know. We'll, we'll get it taken care of. So, um, all I'm right. Their first, I'm their first treasurer, so this is oh, okay. all brand new to me. Oh, super. Then, you know, after we're done with this too, if you want to you know, have a phone call or want me to come out and see you, we can kind of go through this stuff as well. Um, so, okay, I'm going to stop sharing that. And let me see who's here. Uh, Tammy is here. So I am going to uh, give the floor to her. I, well, is she ready? Tammy, are you ready? Nope, she went away. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, you can continue. I can do it at the end. I don't want to oh, interrupt okay. People. All right, that's fine. Okay. All right. Um, <coughs> does anybody unmute? Unmute. Does anybody else have any questions about my my LCI? <laughs> Ryan? Did you, Andy, did that help you at all? The winter travel a little longer. 
Yes, that did. This is pretty straightforward. Okay, great. And again, if you have any trouble, just give me a holler. Okay. okay. All right. I'm going to mute all again. Mute everybody. Yes. And let's go back to sharing this screen here. Uh, where is it? Yeah, now I've lost my presentation. Let's try this. All right. Uh, where were we? Okay. Here we are. Let's go full screen. All right. So we started talking earlier about the administrative uh, budget and the activities budget, the finance there. Uh, the, the, it's really important, especially for, for the new clubs and the new treasurers, that you really understand the difference between these and you keep them separate. I can't stress enough how important it is to have two checking accounts. I know that some clubs like to have one and they just have two different checks and that's fine, but it's much harder to keep the money separate. Banks usually offer free checking accounts and I always highly recommend that people, that clubs have two separate checking accounts that they can keep that money separate. And this all comes down to the audit. It's, if you are ever to be audited by the government, you wanna make sure that you can show uh, real numbers, good numbers, let people know what, uh, uh, let, let the, the, the auditors know that you're, that you're making a goodwill effort to, to do it properly. Um, when they start seeing red flags uh, about money, money being mixed, even if you've done everything correctly, they're going to dig deeper. But if you can at least have it separated out, they can see you're, you're, you're doing due diligence. Um, uh, that, that, uh, that, that'll, make you, that'll make things a lot easier for you. Um, so, so what is the, uh, uh, the, 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 the oddball things that screw people up on if you have any type of a fundraiser with the public, it's activities or foundation. If you have a fundraiser with only Lions, even if they're from other clubs, for instance, district bowling, that can be in your administrative side and that can be money for your admin side. But if the public is invited, that fundraiser is for the activities side or foundation side. If anybody ever has questions about that, please again, ask. But those are usually the biggest separators out. And just always think if anybody is invited to the event other than um, uh, Lions, it's probably an activity side and not an admin side. I gotta make sure you keep that stuff. And same, same with the foundation, make sure that you keep that separated. Um, Financial responsibilities, uh, it's make, make, making your payments. We've kind of gone through a lot of this stuff. Uh, make sure that you make your payments uh, on time. Uh, review your LCI statements monthly. Uh, go online, take a look at it. You know, they've never charged a late fee, at least not to me. I mean, I've, I've missed a month because I'm busy. You know, I've got a business to run and whatnot. And all of a sudden I say, like, oh boy, I didn't go look. And oh, we got some, a bill from last month we didn't pay. Uh, it's not a big deal when that's in September, but it's a big deal when it's right before voting time. So make sure that you go on every month, look at your statements, go through them, bring that information to your board of directors, and make sure that uh, you get everything approved. Say, hey, we've got uh, a new member, we have this bill, this bill, and oh, we've got, uh, we bought six name tags for the Met, for the clubs, and always bring these things to the board of directors a lot of things just to cover yourself that you're not spending money without uh, permission from the board of directors some clubs the board of directors say okay you if, if it's in the budget um you just go ahead and pay it that's fine when you get two signatures and whatnot but uh that's fine it's in the budget we're ready to go just let us know and other things need to be voted on so uh, it's always important especially when you're first starting out to make sure that you ask those questions of your president and 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 the board of directors uh, uh, make sure you, can, you make a report, and you should make a report at, twice a month anyway, one to the board of directors and one to your club. Um, now, if you do your board of directors meeting and your club meeting at the same time, well, then you'd only have to do one. And in that, uh, in that financial report, you should have all of your expenses, all of your incoming money or payments, and then a total bank account, what you have left in your, in your account, and you should 
you should include with that report your budgeted money as well. So that's off to the, to the side. Uh, is it, I don't believe that it's a requirement, but it's a, it is a recommendation that you include the budget there as well. So maybe you've got a, a, a column on the right where your budget is there and say, okay, we budgeted um, to, to spend $1,000 to um, a Lions Club International for a donation. And look at that, we, we, we gave, uh, we've only given $500 to them so far. So we still have it in our budget to donate another $500 to uh, Lions Club International. Keeping in mind always that a budget is exactly that. It's a budget, it's not in stone. So if something happened, oh, I don't know, a pandemic where you don't have the money to uh, to donate to clubs, things that were in your budget to donate to, it's a budget. There's no law that you don't have to go bankrupt because you couldn't get your outlay on your on your activities budget because you just didn't have the income. Because remember, we base our our budget on money we expect to make during that fiscal year. And then, and when you make your budget, it needs to balance. We got this much coming in, this much going out. At the end of the year, hopefully that balance is out to zero and you've brought in as much enough money to, to put out what you budgeted for. Uh, notes from me. Change the signature cards at your bank. Uh, every time you change president, well, let me rephrase that. Our club in DeForest requires two signatures on every check. I highly recommend if your club does not do that, that you do require two signatures on every check. That protects you and it protects the club. Um, but with that said, you're coming in as the new treasurer. The bank needs to know who is allowed to sign. So in our club right now, the um, uh, president, the secretary, and the treasurer are all allowed to sign the check. The check has to have at least two signatures on it. Um, uh, there have been times when we've had the vice president and the secretary and the treasurer. So, but make sure that you've got three people. Well, my recommendation is, is that you have three people at least that are on the signature card so that, well, gee, I need to have, I need to send this check in, but uh, John's on vacation. Well, now you can't do anything until John gets back, but if somebody else is in town, um, you can get that, that, uh, uh, that check signed. Um, Cover your butt, two sets of eyes. That goes to the um, having two, two signatures. And I also would say when you get money in, somebody else counts it with you. Always have somebody else, if you can, count the money with you so then that you have two people sign off. I recommend it's not your spouse. Uh, it should be somebody else in the club that can uh, sign off and say, you know, what, what I do is say, oh, we just had a, a chicken barbecue. All right, here's the money from the chicken barbecue. Great, I grab one of the other lions. I say, let's count the money. We count it, we both sign off on it. This is how much is there. We both count it separately. And then it's there, we got it written. So now we, now that little piece of paper that says that we counted it, that goes in the file and it gets saved forever. Well, seven years is how long you need to keep things. Um, for some reason, we keep things forever. I think I have things from 45 years ago down in my basement, it's crazy. Um, be transparent. Always answer questions. Uh, remember that as the treasurer, you're, you're doing the will of the club and of your board of directors, uh, whether you agree or not. Uh, you're gonna give money to these people and you don't like it, well, that's fine. Or if you wanna give money to these people and the club doesn't like it, that's fine too. You're acting as the treasurer and um, uh, so always be transparent about what you're doing. And when somebody asks you a question, uh, questions your, um, uh, your, your reports. Somebody might question, I, we have two people in our club that regularly question my reports and just to keep me on my toes. Uh, what's this here? And, and I'll explain it. And I think that when I first became treasurer, it was uh, a little difficult because I, I took it personally. Like, well, what do you mean you're checking? Uh, then after a while, I'm like, no, no, this is great. I'm glad that people are checking up on me because sometimes you make a mistake. You make, you, know, you, you put the wrong number in. As you could see, I, I'm a little dyslexic on the number. I paid more, too much money on a, on a bill. Tony? Yes. Why don't you read the chat and address that? Could, could, okay. Can you read it? You got it open? Yeah. Um, 
Tammy wrote, if banks are closed, how are you changing signature cards? Uh, but Tammy, Angie, that is a fantastic Angie, question. <laughs> Angie answered, some banks are allowing you to make appointments or use DocuSign. And our, and, our bank allows, uh, uh, both, both banks that I belong to um, allow appointments. All you have to do is give yeah. them a call and they'll let you in. And right, and Sherry Esser mentioned that, that their bank is open and they have to call ahead, so. Okay, good, good question, really good question. Um, and Gary said their bank will mail forms out, so. Oh, that's several great. Several options. Super. Great, and you know, while I'm doing this, I cannot see the chat. So uh, be, please feel free to just pop okay. me up again and just let I'll me know just, when there's stuff there. I'll yeah. just, when I see one, I'll just jump in then. Yeah, yeah, just jump in, because you know me, I'm a talker, I don't stop. So yeah. uh, you gotta kind of push your way in. Um, uh, I mentioned before about two bank accounts. Uh, if you do have a foundation, you're required to have two bank accounts. So if you have a foundation and uh, you are still using one bank account, please, uh, immediately go to the bank. They are free to have an account. It, banks don't charge nonprofits. I, I've yet to see a bank charge a nonprofit for an account. So uh, some have minimum balances. The bank I bank with does not, uh, at our club does. We don't have a minimum balance because we're a nonprofit. So uh, get that, uh, that, that separate bank account for your foundation for sure. Um, taxes are due in October. If uh, you should uh, get your taxes coming, um, and they usually come in, uh, oh, I think they come in July when the forms get out, go out to us, and then they're due in October because Lions have a fiscal year of um, uh, July through June. So, Tony, uh, yes. It's actually November 15th when they're due. Oh, November 15th. Is that okay? I thought yeah. they were October 15th. It's, right. uh, it's the middle, it's the 15th of the month, five, five months after the end of the fiscal. Five months plan. after the, okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we usually do ours right away in uh, uh, August. So, uh, but thank you for, it's November. Um, your annual corporate corporation reports are due June 30th. Your club might have you do it. The secretary might do it. Make sure that they get done. It's a little tiny blue card that they send you in the mail. It's about that big, no lie. It looks like, a, looks like a drop card out of a magazine. So don't lose them, but they're bright blue. And it's, uh, I believe it's $10 to, to register your corporation. So that's gotta be done. Um, now those are due by June 30th. You usually get them into your club uh, in February. Somewhere in there, it'll come in the mail. And if you guys have a, uh, whoever your, your, your address of record is, that's where it's gonna go. So when you- Tony? Yes, sir. Uh, Jim Borling asks, what is a corporation report? So it's uh, because your, your Lions Club is a, is a corporation, um, you, every year you have to file with the state of Wisconsin a, a annual corporate, corporation report. And it's all online. It's really simple to do, but you've got to go through and put in who the, uh, the president is, the secretary, um, and usually, and the, usually the, just your top, your, your treasurer, secretary, vice president, um, and, uh, let's see, and president, president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, and uh, the putting that you're a nonprofit, the mailing address of the corporation, and give them 10 bucks. And uh, it's, it, it, it goes pretty quick, and, uh, and it's pretty self-explanatory. The card has the, it has a number on it that you have to use. I don't have one handy, I'm sorry. I might, oh, I might. Yep, I got one here. All right, looks like this. All right, can you see that? Oh, I sorry, can you, you know, you have to, let me stop sharing here. All right, so let's see. Let me put myself on, Bruce is up on the screen, but. Hit speaker view. Speaker view, speaker view. Where did it go? It was there a minute ago. And speaker view. Okay, I, yeah, I have a speaker view on, but for some reason it's showing you. So, let me click on me and see if that helps. Let's see. 
Stop video, rename, pin, spotlight video. Here I am. Okay, I'm spotlighted. Hey. All right. So it looks like this. Uh, you get this uh, this little blue card in the mail. It says annual. Uh, Hold it up report. higher. Hold it up higher. How is that? <laughs> no, now we see the How there. How about there? You see that? Sounds good. Yep. All right. That's what it looks like. It's this tiny little blue card. Okay. And on the back, there's some instructions from the state of Wisconsin. And it's a notice of annual report filing uh, like a requirement. Okay. And so on the front is this number right here. It's an ID. And uh, let me see if I can turn my, my video around. And uh, every yeah. treasurer is every treasurer is supposed to fill that out. Either treasurer and or secretary. Treasurer or secretary. Yeah. There. Okay. Now I'm not mirrored anymore. So okay. No, oh, you still shouldn't. Oh, whatever. Okay. Yeah. So the, this go like you can see this goes to um, our club address is where it went to. So it's so whichever whatever your club is filing. That's the address it's gonna to go to. So check with your president and your secretary and your treasurer and see who's responsible for this in your club, but make sure this gets done annually so that uh, you're, you're registered with the state of Wisconsin. Okay. And then this is the form. I probably always print it every year so that I have it in case I need it. Everything is there. So, um, but it really is quick. It only takes a few minutes to do. Tony, uh, um, yeah. Sherry Esser says that they do not get that form. They fill out the the uh, federal taxes, the the but they do not get the corporate report. Um, well, that's it's 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 well, you know, I guess it's possible, and maybe Tammy can answer this question. Um, uh, is it possible that not all Lions Clubs are incorporated? I would say most Lions Clubs probably, I think you only get that maybe if you have that foundation. And most Lions Clubs do not have a foundation. No. No? Okay. We've always gotten it. We've only had a foundation for one year. Yeah, okay. same with us. We always got it too. Okay. I don't if, know then. If your club has a federal identification number, um, you probably... Uh, are incorporated in, and need to fill out this report. Um, let me look into that a little bit more. I'll write myself some notes and I'll see if I can get more information on that and see if most clubs are incorporated and how you would go about filling out your forms if you haven't been doing it in the past. Yeah, so let Tony, me look here's a that. comment from Gary Wensing. Mm -hmm. uh, he says that uh, in their club, another member does it. He does it every year. Uh, oh, that's perfect. That's great. As long as you, ha it doesn't have to be a treasurer or secretary, but it has. It needs to be filled out by someone in the club, and as long as it goes to one person and they fill it out, that's fine. It, exactly. Uh, like for instance, our taxes in our club uh, are done by. We have a member who does the taxes every year. And so I just get him the reports and he does the taxes. That's, that's his contribution. And as he's been doing it as long as we've been, uh, as long as I've been in the club. So, um, uh, so, so, so if you have somebody who always does your annual report, that's great. As long as it gets done, um, as, uh, being on the administrative uh, board of your club, uh, it's just something to keep in mind and make sure it gets done. Um, here's a comment from Roger, uh, you have to stay current with DFI. That's the Department of Financial Institutions. That's what this corporate report is. Right. Uh, you have to have a registered agent and address. If if that goes dark or you lose that person and that address, um, there's no one to mail it to. That's why it's important to fill this out each year so it goes to an active member. So yes. what, what would your recommendation be? I've been a treasurer since 2012 and have never heard of this form. And the treasurer I took over from didn't tell me anything about a state filing. Um, check well, with your secretary or oh, go ahead, Bruce. Yeah, check with your secretary. 
to see if if he fills one out or she or if another member in the club. But if it's filled out, the secretary should probably know about it and who does it. So the form, I think, like Sherry had talked about that, I think we all are familiar with. It's the Form 990 that right, we yeah. fill out for federal, and that does not then take care of state at the same time. No, correct. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm just about done here. Um, so we did that. Uh, raffle licenses, uh, your club uh, needs to get, if you, if you get raffle licenses, they're usually uh, due at January 31st, but you can apply for them toward the end of November, I think November 26th or so, you can actually get your, get those renewed. Um, so watch for your, I don't know, whoever is in charge of that. It could be your service chair, it could be your um, uh, secretary, it could be you, or it could be your fundraising chair. Could be in charge of making sure that you get your raffle license and get them renewed. Do that every year because if you miss a year, you got to start from scratch and it's it's just a pain. So, and that's $25, I think, or yeah, that could be the $10 one. They're really, they're, they're, they're pretty they're cheap. They're $25 per license. There's a class A and a class B. Right. Class B is for your um, raffles where you don't have right. names on them, just a number ticket, and they're done in the same day. And the uh, class A is the raffle where you sell tickets for two, three months before you do the drawing. And right. There, there are a lot of regulations in each of those. So, and you have to do a report when you renew your license, but you can do it all online and it's actually pretty simple. Yeah. Um, while I'm on here, Roger Tesh said that for those of you who don't know about the uh, corporation report, you can go to the D DFI, the Department of Financial Institute web site and search for your club name. And then you should be able to find if, if you're registered or not. Yeah, and that website is, I believe it's just, let's see, I got it right here. It's www.wdfi.org. I'll type that into www.wdfi.org. There you go. So that's the website for the Department of Financial Institutions. If I can add on the raffle license, uh, that, that date is, I think is just club specific. Ours is November. It's an annual license and all depends on when you probably first applied. Yeah. No, they're all, they all expire um, in January every year. Ours expire in October. Yeah, hmm. it, it's club specific. It depends on when you actually uh, apply for it. Okay. I missed that, uh, what that website was. Um, I typed it in the chat window, it's, but it's www.wdfi.org. Okay, I didn't have the chat window up, so. That's fine, no problem. Bye. No problem at all. Okay, so raffle licenses, obviously I was mistaken about that. I'm sorry mm -hmm. about that. Um, uh, so any other questions that people want to throw out there right now? I think that'd be a good idea. Go ahead and. Uh, Tony, I got a couple of things I wanted to just add. Thank you. Um, uh, one is, um, oh, I made notes here. Okay, um, moving money. You can move money from admin to activity yeah. or your foundation, but you cannot move it the other way. Correct. So you, you cannot, if your admin account is short, you can't take activity money to pay your office supply bill or whatever. Um, that's a no-no. Um, and it is recommended that you have your books audited each year. Um, not all clubs do this, but um, it should be audited. You can have it audited by an accountant. Uh, 
an accountant in your club can do it. Um, or you can have uh, some other, if you know a lion in another club that is uh, an accountant or has the background to do it, they can do it. Um, you, or like I said, someone else in your club, uh, you can call um, some of the district officers do audits. Um, I do audits. Um, I know there's some others that do audits. So uh, it's sort of important to have your books audited. If you don't do it every year, at least every couple of years. But that is one of the recommendations to have your books audited each year. I highly recommend that you do an audit every year, even if it's just an internal audit. But at some point, somebody should be checking your work. Yeah. You don't, and again, and don't take it personally. I think that was that was all that I had, Tony. Okay. Um, uh, there's let's a, see. There's a chat though. Sherry asked. We found out earlier this year that we need to have a Class B raffle license. How do I get the information I need to apply for? How do I get the older information I need to apply for it? Sherry, um, can you unmute yourself? Can you uh, the older information, like what you used to have on your license? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so when I started filling out the registration form for that, it's asking me for like information from when we first became a club, which I only have information back to like 1970s. Our club was formed back in like 1949 or 41 or something like that. Um, I don't have that original information. <laughs> Well, why don't we, um, uh, let me write some notes here. I'll contact you, Sherry, and we can go over the form together and see exactly what they need. What, what, what exactly is the question that they're asking? I would have to go dig that form. I don't okay. have it with me. Yeah, that's um, fine. What's your phone number? It, it, it's 608-553-1340. Mm -hmm. 553-1340. They usually want a copy of your charter. Which that I have. It's the um, old incorporation papers and there was something else. Um, and it, one of the other things that it asks for is like our bylaws. But I mean, I only have like our current and I don't know if that includes international's bylaws or just what we go by. They, ju they just need it for your club because the raffle licenses are state of Wisconsin. And so they're only concerned about your bylaws for your, for your state of Wisconsin uh, charter uh, for your, for your club here. Um, raffles that are, you have to be a Wisconsin corporation slash nonprofit, um, uh, uh, which, or, I guess, what is the 501C7? What is that, Bruce? What do they call that? 501C3? A seven. A social club. Oh, yeah, that could be. So, we're a lot, so whatever, you're a nonprofit. And so you're, most of us are 501C4s. C4s, that's what I'm looking for, yeah. Yeah. Um, so and the only people who get raffle licenses are 501C4s and C3s. So they just want to make sure that that's in your bylaws and you have to be from the state of Wisconsin. For instance, if somebody from Minnesota wanted to sell raffle tickets in Wisconsin, they couldn't. It has to be Wisconsin. But I don't have anything that complicated. Put Sherry, I don't you don't need anything that complicated. I'm just telling you what the state wants. Is that they're, they're only concerned about, about Wisconsin. They're not concerned about international. And Sherry, no, what else? If your club doesn't have it, you just fall under the district, which is in the state of Wisconsin. And our district co constitution and bylaws are on our website that you can always get it off from there. Okay. Write myself some notes here. Well, uh, I'm, I'm yeah. looking at the application now and Basically, all you need to know is the date organized or chartered. Yeah, I thought I thought it was charter or bylaws and constitution. No, it 
describe your community activities, which you can do easily enough. Yeah, there really isn't, there isn't a lot on here that you would need history on. But down at the bottom of the form that I filled out, it had a paragraph that said, uh, please attach charter, and I thought it said, or constitution slash bylaws. Yeah. That's that's true, but okay. those you sh I don't know if you have the club one, but if you don't, the district ones are on the district website. I do believe, right, Tammy? Yes, they are. They They're are on the, the district, district website, website, and you can use that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, either way, if uh, I can, I can address that with people and individually if they'd like help putting that together. Um, I've sent all the all the correspondence I've sent out has had has my email and my phone number there. Uh, I always tell people text me first uh, or just be prepared to answer or leave a message because if you come up on my phone, I don't recognize the number. I don't answer it until I listen to the message because, uh, well, as we all know, it's nothing but nothing but spam and robocalls these days. It's hard to uh, get anything done. So, Tony, there was a question on bonding of officers. Uh, uh, we get a bond from international. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's part of your dues. That's, that's what I thought, but in the uh, pre-work, it sounded like we had to bond ourselves. Yes. Uh, I, I, was, I was actually reading that right before the meeting, and I'm like, this, this is worded in a way that it makes it sound like you've got to go out and get a bond, but, but you don't. Um, when you get your dues, I believe it's on the first half dues for international. There's a, a line there for your uh, for your bond. Yes, I think is is it a hundred dollars? No, it's like ten or twelve dollars. Ten or twelve dollars. Oh, a hundred dollars. I think is for uh, Leo's for your Leo's uh, charter, which yeah. oddly enough, you can pay for your Leo's charter out of your activities fund. Very weird. But yes, because yeah. it's a project. Yeah. Leos but are considered a project. If one of your Leos wants to go to district convention, that's got to come out of admin. So, uh, right. so that, that, that's a, a little bit of a, of a, of a crazy thing. And, you know, again, keep them separate. Um, uh, any other questions anybody has? As always, um, Please feel free to contact us all the time. Don't ever feel like you're asking a silly question or a dumb question. We've all been um, new to this and we've all had a lot of questions and uh, you might not have a question today, but you might have one tomorrow or you might have one in three days or two weeks or 10 weeks. Just don't be afraid to call in and ask us and we can help you. Uh, again, uh, any one of us would be more than happy to come to you if we had to and, and help walk you through it. Um, uh, while if you're thinking, while anybody's thinking of more questions, I'm going to give the floor to our incoming uh, district governor-elect Tammy Rockenbach, and um, uh, let's. Uh, she's got a lot of wonderful things to tell us. So go ahead, Tammy. I hope you wrote something for me then. I did. I did. I wrote something here. Here, read it. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> First, I really want to thank you, Tony and Bruce and Adam is uh, our GMT. These guys have done a phenomenal job. About last October, last fall, we sat down to start working on ideas. And we had talked about moving it to an online format. And I was kind of pushing back and going, first of all, do all of our clubs have Wi-Fi? Do they have emails? Things like that. Let's get things in place. Well, COVID came along. These guys had already updated workbooks, presentations, and we were ready to go to moving this to a virtual. So thank you guys for all that time and effort you have put into it. So COVID-19 really changed our world. And without the in-person meetings, we had to learn to conduct our business through emails, conference calls, Facebook chats, Zoom meetings. We found a way to elect our officers and the district and state found ways to run elections. That's obviously how I finally got elected just yesterday um, congratulations that was that was just just you know certified so yes brand new. 
Um, but did you guys enjoy the opportunity to actually have an opportunity to vote online? Because we had 600 delegates throughout the state. Last year's state convention, there were only 400 delegates there to vote. Most state conventions, we only have 200. So I kind of think this might be a way that we start to run our elections because you get a much better say of our, our organization. I sat in on a meeting where Second International Vice President Brian Sheehan out of Minnesota said, with COVID-19 and us being forced to rethink how we do business, we have just catapulted our organization about 10 years ahead of where we would be. Wow. LCI is still slowly making those changes, but they are being forced to. This last um, April, they had to have their first online board meetings. They've had to learn how to do business also. The online meetings have offered us some benefits, and I want to share my experience with the Madison Central virtual meeting. At that meeting, they had a snowbird. They had somebody who was at work and was able to attend between, on her lunch. And there was a third member who was going through cancer treatment and couldn't have risked coming in because of an infection. Three members that normally would not have been at the meeting were able to participate. It also offers us abilities to get a much wider scope of maybe speakers, presentations, because literally they can be from anywhere in the world. I've been doing a lot of Zoom virtual cocktail hours with lions in Macedonia and France and England. So it's really changed the way we are looking at things. As we start to open up, maybe we need to consider keeping online meetings as an option. Wisconsin has that thing called winter around here, where snow, sleet, cold makes us sometimes have to cancel meeting. Maybe this is an opportunity for us to always be able to have something to fall back on. We as a district are looking at purchasing a Zoom license so that obviously the district would be able to use it, but it might be available for a club if they choose to want to just maybe do a Zoom meeting. We may do a region meeting this way or um, a zone meeting because of weather. We also, many clubs have lost their service projects and fundraisers, but really this didn't stop our lions. We are still providing our services. We continue to fund our food pantries. We're getting lunch programs for the kids. We're delivering groceries for our seniors. And we've become adept at doing Facebook Live reading to kids so that parents have at least 15 minutes to themselves. Maybe we can expand on that. Maybe we could do crafts on Facebook or do science experiments. Opportunities are endless for us. We've also been able to help the environment because highway cleanup in and it's itself is basically a social distanced service project. We can continue to provide our service in our communities. We just need to get maybe creative with that. What we are doing now, I think, is really asking our communities what they need rather than what we think that they need. And I think we're providing better service that way. So some changes that happened before COVID. In December, we lost our first international vice president, Haynes Townsend. Haynes was going to be inducted at the International Convention in Singapore. With his death, LCI appointed Douglas Alexander to first vice president. But because he was an appointed position without an international convention, there was no voting and therefore he was not able to move up. So international president Jung Yul Choi will remain our international president this year. The theme is going to be kindness matters and kindness really is the lions and we provide kindness in all that we do. When I was affiliate district president in 20, oh, 2007 and 08, I urged the random acts of kindness and I'm urging the random acts of kindness out. Kindness is big and kindness is small. It ranges from a smile to a cure. And I'm asking, what will you do? What kind of kindness will you be providing? Wisconsin Lions turn 100 years old in 2021, and the PR campaign is going to be 100 acts of kindness. So we're gonna ask you to document what you are doing and really what will this place be with 100 acts of kindness, we will be a kinder place. So as we create this kinder world, we need to share it with others. We need to invite them to our service projects, otherwise known as our acts of kindness. And over the next few months, we're gonna learn more about NAMI, which is the North American Membership Initiative. 
And for the last 20 years, North America has been trending downward in membership. And LCI is looking for ways to change that. This new initiative has been tested in nine pilots districts throughout the US and Canada, and it is working. Jody Burmeister will be our NAMI champion, and she's going to be leading our district in this initi initiative, and she'll be getting us more information. I anticipate and I expect that we will be at positive membership at the end of 2021. This is our opportunity to shine. Let's make our Lions organization a better organization because kindness matters. And thank you for letting me be your district governor this next year. Thank you very much, uh, incoming uh, Governor Tammy. <laughs> oh. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, does anybody else have any questions? Uh, let's see, I've got, let's see, um, uh, in pre-work bonding of officers was suggested. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about this? Yeah, um, yeah. Yes. Oh, did we already cover that? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. uh, bonding is, sure. comes from international, mm -hmm. and it'll be on your first invoice from Lions International, and you'll be bonded through them. Um, uh, so I think that I think it's probably already been covered. Oh, I see what I did. I I scrolled down. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> so sorry about that. So if nobody else has any questions, I'd like to thank uh, everybody for coming and thank you for all the great great questions. Um, uh, uh, wait, wait, wait. I'd like to know if there are requirements around winners for raffle prizes. Yes, yeah. there are requirements for winners for raffle prizes. Um, you have to give the prizes away. <laughs> uh, I, I don't really understand the, the, are you like a requirement of? All right, uh, so, so we just had our raffle and the top prize was $1,800 cash. Oh. Do we have to like issue a 1099? Yes. How do we go about doing that? Our club has not done that in the past, so we probably. Well, you could just not do it, but that would not be a good idea. <laughs> um, uh, you can you can download the forms right off the um, uh, the website, the state of Wisconsin website, and. I'm trying, I'm trying to think off the top of my head what the uh, the website is, but all those forms are, you can actually just Google uh, Wisconsin 1099 and uh, and then you can fill that out and then they just, they just get that with their prize. You, you can send it to them uh, anytime before the end of the year usually. So uh, we, we send them out to all of our uh, prize winners and to our uh, uh, big donators as well. Uh, somebody asked what the base limit is on that. And again, we send them to everybody. So, uh, uh, Bruce, do you know what the base limit is on that? Is it 1000 or 1500 It is $600. I sold lottery for a lot of years. Oh, all right. So it's $600. So anything above and beyond $600, they're required to, um, to report on their taxes. And, uh, of course, we're retired, we're retired to, to report it as well. So, so what do you do up front when you send the check? I mean, do you have to have them fill out some kind of a form with their social security number and all that? It's a good question, Tammy. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm yeah, we usually just send them the, uh, the form saying we gave you this money and uh, you have to report it on your taxes. So you're asking is, uh, do we have to, are we required to get that information from them? And I can look into that and I can get that information to you uh, quickly. Uh, Roger, is that who asked that? Oh, this is Gary. Oh, Gary. Gary, Gary Wensing. Okay. Uh, Gary Wensing. I can get that information right off the uh, the, the raffle website. Gary Wensing. Uh, prize over six hundred. All right, I'll get that information for you. It might not be till tomorrow. It might be tonight. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, the Not form is the ninety nine miscellaneous M I S C. Mm hmm. Uh, we, we in our club give out the checks immediately and then we send them the forms. So, uh, I, I, Sherry, I believe that that's for all prizes if it's a check or cash. Are you talking about is it for like a prize? If a prize is valued more than that? I, I do not know. I have to look into yeah, that yeah. as well um, because we, I mean. we, we just give <laughs> cash as well. So, um, I will look into that as well. So, um, cash or prize. Mm -hmm. My guess is that it's going to be the same. 
uh, the, the retail value um, is probably what the number is, but I will, I will look at that and I will send it out to everybody, okay? I'll get that information and send it to everyone. Um, again, it might not be for 48 hours, uh, but I will make sure that it gets out to everybody so that we can be all on the same page. All right. Good question. And I, and I can't really say that enough. Uh, I love the questions and they were all really great questions. Um, thank you to uh, Lion Tammy and Lion Bill and Al who may have already popped out. Uh, Al's still here, um, but Lion Bill. And uh, a huge thank you to Lion Bruce who without him, I couldn't have made this happen. Um, and the entire GAT team, we are here for you. And we are gonna really work hard to make this uh, electronic communication work for our clubs and for our district. And, uh, but if in, in, in the event that it's not working for you, we will, we will certainly accommodate you and make sure that uh, uh, you get the information that you need because we're here for you. Your, your entire district is here to help you. Don't ever be afraid to contact district. We're not scary people. <laughs> you know, we're, we're here for you. That's why we're here. We're here to help everybody out, no matter how big or small. So don't ever be afraid to, uh, to contact us. So, so with that said, uh, I'm going to say goodbye and thank you all very, very much for coming. And we did that in uh, right about an hour. So that's good. This entire meeting is recorded and I believe we're going to post it up on the district website once we figure out how to do that. So, <laughs> so thank you all Tony, for coming. Yes. Before you go, uh, Sherry was gonna stay on. She was yep. had a question for you. Yep, yep. I'm gonna stay on. Anybody else who wants to stay on if they want to, uh, go ahead. But otherwise, you're all free to go.